So we're going to share some pretty neat stuff that's opening up this weekend here, and it's the uh, exhibit that's uh, Monet to Matisse. It is going to be an incredible opportunity for folks to see truly a uh, phenomenal artwork by these incredible artists. And here to talk a little bit about that, and we'll just let her jump right in here, is Dr. Patricia McDonald, who is going to share a little bit about this exhibit and what it means. Thank you, thank you, and so glad to host the mayor's news briefing here this morning. Um, so Patricia McDonald, director of the Wichita Art Museum. We're really thrilled to bring this special exhibition, Monet de Matisse, French Moderns from the Brooklyn Museum to Wichita. 59 world masterpieces, uh, a special opportunity because so many of these artists are what I would call household names. Monet, Matisse, Renoir, Cezanne, Degas. As a matter of fact, the Wichita Art Museum regularly presents world masterpieces. Our own permanent collection here in Wichita has Edward Hopper, George O'Keefe, Thomas Aikens, any number of people, Andrew Wyeth, any number of people who are also household names. Uh, and yet Impressionism is beloved and Impressionism and later movements of French art are so beloved. I leapt at the chance to bring this here to our community. And one of the things that we've done in presenting these French moderns is to wrap it in other enrichment as you go through different galleries. So. Paris really was the center of the art world across the 19th century, and that only changed with the Second World War. If you were an American artist of any ambition, as a matter of fact, if you were an Italian artist, if you were a German artist, you needed to get yourself to France and to Paris. And so we are also presenting gems from our own Wichita permanent collection um, of artists who spent time in Paris. There are two paintings as a part of our exhibition that were actually made in Giverny, which was the wonderful little village where uh, Claude Monet settled. Uh, we have a painting of a bridge over the River Seine in Paris. We have another painting that's a, a fountain in Paris. So um, America Americans were there um, and, and learning from the French, so e embracing Impressionism. And we wanted to put this wonderful exhibition of 59 world masterpieces from New York City, from Brooklyn, in a larger context so that, yes, come here, see this spectacular exhibition of all sorts of very well-known artists, um, but, but wander into other galleries for learning as well. So we will have this exhibition here and in Wichita through May 20. Um, we hope lots of people come regularly. We have all sorts of wonderful additional education programming connected to it for families, for teens, for adults. We hope we, we, hope we have swarms. We hope we have lines, Mayor Longwell, sure. for this show. As a matter of fact, um, just interesting anecdote, we're getting all sorts of um, uh, buzz already about the show. We had someone phone us from Houston to be certain of our hours because this individual is booking a flight to come to Wichita to see this exhibition. So we, based on that and many other um, things, we hope this exhibition will do well and we hope the people of Wichita uh, you know, find their way to our museum to come and enjoy these world masterpieces. And thanks again for having this news conference here at the Art Museum this morning. I can understand someone from Houston wanting to book a flight to Wichita. We're a great place to visit, and I've been to Paris and seen Monet's works there in Paris. It's a lot easier and cheaper to get to Wichita than it is Paris. And this is a great opportunity to see their works right here. And speaking of their works, I think this might be a great opportunity for people to come in and buy a membership to this museum. Because if you do not have a membership, it's going to cost you $17 to come and see these works plus the $10 admission into the museum. $15 for seniors. Um, but if you have a membership, it's free. So you can nearly pay for certainly half of a year's membership with one visit. So that would be a great reason to come in and buy a membership this weekend if you want to come and see these works certainly um, would, would 
be able to stretch the dollar and see some fabulous works and then come back often because they often rotate a number of different exhibits and, uh, and there's always something new to see. So encouraging people to come in, maybe even buy a membership. You don't have to, but it would be a great bargain to do that. So a couple other things mentioned, Saturdays here at the museum are always free. Still have to pay to go see the uh, Monet to Matisse exhibit itself, but you can get into the museum free on Saturdays. And, and that certainly is a great bargain. I, I think you're gonna be busy this Saturday. So, so great access on Saturdays. I wanna also uh, tell you to mark your calendars for, for March 10th or April 21st when admission to the Monet to Matisse will be free. So not, not to discourage people to come this weekend, but they are going to have two free days. So it might be a little overwhelming, but we want to offer those two free days up. So I think that's a, a great opportunity for Wichita's and now I understand Houston's to come and partake in this unbelievable exhibit in this great museum. I want to mention again the film shorts. So uh, another opportunity this year, the Wichita Public Library is going to show the Academy short films. They're going to be hosting that. So before or after your museum visit on Saturday, you can go to the Orpheum at 10 a.m. and watch all the category shorts. On Sunday, stop by the Alfred Branch Library at 1.15 to watch live action and animated genre shorts. Check out the full schedule of Academy Award screenings. can be found on library's event calendar at wichitalibrary.org slash Academy Awards. So some pretty neat stuff that is available in our wonderful city. At that point in time, other than George and I having a private conversation of who the baseball team is, I'll open it up for questions. This is a pretty big deal for the city. You might have talked about this earlier, but just kind of tell us a little bit more about that getting a big deal. I mean, how big is this for the city of Wichita to get this type of an artist? So Patricia might be the best one to answer that. I don't know what hoops you had to jump through, Patricia, to bring this to Wichita. Wonderful question. I think it is a big deal for the city of Wichita because we don't regularly get artists of this name recognition here. Um, in museums, there's a network um, of colleagues and, and friends. And so we received material that this would be a possibility. And guess how long it took me to pick up the phone to secure it for Wichita? Only a beat. So um, thank you for the question. Can I ask you a, you something off topic about the roads? Sure. Um, Far away. We've had a couple of, you know, the last couple of days with snow yeah. and ice. Obviously, the main road right. has been great. Matter of fact, coming in today, no problem at all. The one thing I did hear from some folks from EMS and fire and uh, police is some of these side streets. We had an accident at right. 11th and uh, River Boulevard today. Sure. I don't know what the budget is like, but is there, is there any uh, something on the table maybe to start doing some more of the side streets? So, so nothing on the table to do side streets uh, for a wide variety of reasons. Um, it becomes very difficult. You, you'll see when you get into neighborhoods, a lot of people park on the side streets and it becomes difficult to weave in and out of parked cars and wide variety of reasons. And you start getting into which side streets do you clear first, which neighborhoods in a massive storm event. It is incredibly difficult to work our way all through the city just on the main arterials. And so it's, um, would be even um, obviously a, a bigger task to try and clear neighborhood streets. And they, again, neighborhood streets come with a lot of other challenges that arterials don't. Would, uh, would, I just wonder if there'd be any money in the budget though, let's say if fire or police come and say, hey, we use this route quite a bit, would there be any way to have crews? So, so again, I would say fire and, and Police are going to use the main arterials quite a bit. I don't know that there's any neighborhood street. If there's a neighborhood street that acts as an arterial, um, we probably have that on uh, the, the listing of streets to be cleared. And so we'll do some of that. But there are no plans to get into the neighborhood at this point. 
And, and we've been fortunate the last couple of years. We've had some leftover monies and we've put it back into the general fund budget. Uh, certainly don't want to encourage massive snowstorms that totally deplete the budget. We've had some years where you've had to supplement that budget, but it's been a while. We've been fortunate. And our street crews do a phenomenal job. A lot of challenges, kind of depends on how the storm event comes. As we heard this last storm event um, uh, initiated with heavy rains, which washed a lot of the, the premix out and weren't able to have the streets treated like we would like to have them treated because it simply got washed away. So it's always a challenge. Every storm is a little bit unique and the crews are out there in the worst of conditions continuing to try and make sure that our public is as safe as they can be. Some people just need to also learn to slow down a little bit. 